Hi guys, it's me, Trudy Lee. How's everybody doing? It's raining here, thank goodness. If you're new to this channel, thank you for being here and welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, please like and subscribe. That really helps get my message out to everybody, so I appreciate that. Okay, I got my little Frasier friend here, if y'all can see him back there. He's sleeping on my bed. I don't know where Addy Cat went. I guess she ran off somewhere. This little kitty's probably about seven months old or so. He's not fixed yet, but he needs to be. I keep telling my daughter, you need to go get him fixed, neutered. He is the boss. I mean, he really is the boss. And he wants to lay on the bed. He'll tell Addy Cat, beat it. And she just lets him have it, you know. She's bigger than him and everything, but he's so bossy. He doesn't give up. And he'll grab her by the neck, you know. So they play and have fun, but he's definitely the boss. He really is. I have to... When she's eating, he almost wants to push her away from her food, even though he gets fed by my daughter. So I have to put him out just to feed her because he, he wants it. She would let him have it. She'll just walk away. She's not a fighter. <laughs> Poor little thing. Did y'all watch the Rachel Maddow show? So she's on, what, one time a week, I think now. But um, she was airing an interview um with George Santos and some Brazilian vodka, uh, podcast. And he claimed that he had been mugged on Fifth Avenue like at three o'clock in the afternoon. And they took his briefcase, his watch, and his shoes. He's just telling, he was saying how, you know, how terrible it is here and how unsafe it is. And also that he claimed that there was an assass assassination attempt on his life. Man, this man never stops. They asked him for a police report to prove, you know, that he'd been robbed. And, of course, he couldn't ever provide them with that. So, you know, you know what that means. It probably didn't happen. And then he talks about um, his stance on immigration, that he's been so critical of the, you know, people that are immigrating here from uh, other countries because he said it's the way that they start, you know, they start the wrong way. Uh, when you start with a lie or when you start doing something wrong, <laughs> then, you know, that that's no way to start a relationship, he said. You know, I'm not saying it exactly the way he said it, but basically that's what he said. That's no way. You shouldn't start a relationship based on doing something wrong and lies. Hello? That's the pot calling the kettle black, if I've ever heard of it, <laughs> for real. I can't believe it. And I'm, I'm going to do a little bit, a little reading. I pulled some cards right before I turned on uh, the camera. Because I want to take a look at Santos. And, you know, I think when I did the last reading, everything was going to be okay for him. You know what I mean? Um, so I want to do another reading and see if things are still going well for him. Okay, um... I know he's uh, he's gotten assignments. Uh, it's like they're treating him like he's a king over there, and he's loving it, basically. So let's take a look and see what's going on with him. So the first card that I pulled for him is the Queen of Pentacles. So uh, basically, he loves his social status. This is like... Um, this is what he wanted, you know. He wanted to say, I'm a congressman. I'm in the House of Representatives. This is a social honor for him. And, you know, nothing's going to stop me now. Uh, he's queen for a day. And also, I do believe that this represents somebody that helped him. A woman that, you know, gave him advice, helped him. A very wealthy woman. Now, she may not have known how deep his lies go. She may not have known all the things that he's lied about, but um, I feel like she did invite him to be a little bit untruthful, like uh, you can, it's okay to set, tell a little white lie, you know, like it won't matter, but you know, he's crossed into um, so many lies, he's just, it's just terrible, it's really terrible, but I think, uh, yeah, he's, he's very happy with being a congressman. He loves it. He really loves it. He's he's all about the status. I just you know I just want to say I'm a congressman. That's it. And of course the the money that goes with it. 
Now crossing over that is uh, Five of Cups. So this is a card of regret. So he does have some regrets on some of the things that he said. And I'm sure there are the things that, you know, have exposed him, uh, the public appearances where he's made bald face lies and he can't, he can't refute them. He can't say, I didn't say that because there he is saying it. So he does have some regrets about the things that he's done. Not that, you know, he wouldn't lie again. It's just, you know, regrets maybe being caught in the middle of all these lies. Um, he has regrets that, you know, everybody is after him, basically. And he's embarrassed, I believe. Um, and that's why he runs away from the camera. That's why he runs away from reporters and won't answer their questions. Because he regrets of all the public lies that he's said. It's embarrassing. He's embarrassed. And he should be. So I'm glad at least he's embarrassed. Overlooking his situation is the Five of Wands. There is so much conflict around him. Um, you know, there are, there are other Republicans there that, you know, don't have any respect for him. They don't believe that he ought to uh, have the assignments that were given to him. They're not happy with having uh, a liar in the middle of, you know, the House of Representatives. There's some genuinely respectable Republicans that are really wanting him to resign. So there's a lot of conflict going on around him. Um, it's a huge disagreement about him, you know, serving in those uh, two two committees. I think House of Small Business Committee and the House Science, Space, and Technology Committee, and they just want him to resign. But you know, he's not going to do that. He's not going to resign. He loves he loves where he is. He loves what he's doing. Um, but there's a lot of chaos, chaos going on around him, a lot of fighting and, you know, disagreements. People, they don't like him. So I don't blame them. Uh, this is foundation of the situation, the hermit. Uh, the hermit, this is basically Santos going into hiding, being a hermit. Remember that, that little thing that they're doing in New York City? Uh, where's George Santos? <laughs> so New York citizens are going to make his life a living hell. So he's, you know, he's basically a hermit. He's gone into hiding. You're not going to see him out in public in New York because there's too many people that want him gone. So, you know, even on uh, Saturday Night Live, they're making fun out of him, you know. It's just, uh, yeah. We're not going to, we'll see him, you know, probably, he'll probably stick around Washington or something and not go back to New York. And I pulled one more card just for the near future. What's going on in the near future with him? It's a very, very good card to get you guys. This is Nine of Cups. He's feeling great. Future looks pretty good too for Santos. That's the very near future. He's feeling very proud of himself, even though, you know, he, he knows he's a ball face liar. He's still proud of where he's at. You know, I don't care how I got there. I'm feeling good, you know. And uh, he should because he got all those committee assignments and everything. He may be a little embarrassed and not be able to show his face, but hey, he got what he wanted. And for him, I guess that's an okay trade-off. You know, maybe for me and you, that wouldn't be okay. We wouldn't want to trade our dignity for anything, but he he's feeling good about it. He traded his dignity and he's okay with it. So it looks like in the near future, Things are going to be going well for him. So that stinks, but that's what's going on. You know, I know there's a lot of um, investigations and things, but as we all know, investigations take forever. Forever. I don't know. The wheels of justice turn super slowly. Somebody needs to put some grease on those wheels, I'll tell you. <laughs> we need to speed it up. I don't know what the heck is wrong with our system here that we can't, you know, do an investigation in a timely manner. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, the classified documents that are popping up everywhere. Oh my gosh, that is so embarrassing that Biden had all, you know, every, every other day they're finding some more classified documents. It's embarrassing because um, of what Biden said, that, they, that he would never bring them home and that he, you know, he, he would handle them 
with so much respect and dignity and, you know, and he should. And then they popped up in his home and his garage and all that. And they, they keep popping up, even from when he was a senator, too. Now, I don't feel like that's something that he did purposely. And I did a reading on that. And I know that it's... Um, it's other people that have packed those boxes and stuff. It wasn't him packing the boxes. He may have never even looked in those boxes. They may be packed up, sealed, stacked up, done, gone. You know, what is he going to look in the boxes for? Um, and then Pence. <laughs> now Pence. He has a bunch of classified documents too. So, hey, I bet everybody does. I will bet you every single president and vice president and senator, I bet they all have classified documents. Even though they're saying they don't, I bet they all do. I bet they all do. And uh, it's just sloppiness. That's all it is. It's really just carelessness, sloppiness. And, you know, you wonder why uh, Russia has made, you know, has such a strategy against us and how they were able to, you know, get hold of Trump and all his cronies and all that. There's things that they have found out that they shouldn't know about, you know. There really is. So, what's going to happen with all this? Is this going to be a nothing burger? Is it going to be, you know, is this going to be like, is it going to be a broader investigation? Now, are they going to investigate Pence too? Come on. Then if they investigate Pence, they should go investigate Obama. And <laughs> one thing leads to another. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. But does that mean that it's going to knock the wind out of the sails uh, of the investigation of Trump? That's what I really want to know about. Does that mean that Trump is off the hook now that, you know, it looks like everybody went home with some documents that they shouldn't have? They all have top secret documents. And does that mean Trump's off the hook for it? So I'm going to shuffle up these cards and take a look at them. And let's see if Trump is off the hook because of all these um, documents that have been found in Biden's home and Pence, you know, home. Let's see if this is going to change things for Trump. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so I shuffled the cards and laid them out. And uh, I'm looking at them now. And let me tell you I don't think he's gonna get away with anything just because other classified documents have been found I don't think I don't think it's gonna have that much bearing on him uh, this is the Hierophant card this stands for tradition and you know like following a traditional path when you break the law you know you you uh, you're gonna have to you know be prosecuted for it just like anybody else so I don't feel like this is really going to have any bearing on what, you know, just because Biden had classified documents or Pence, you know, had some classified documents. It's not the same. It's because, you know, he hid them and said he didn't have them and they asked for them and he wouldn't give it to him. So there's a lot more going on there. And this tells me that um, just like anybody else, if we did that, of course, it would have happened a lot more quickly. We'd be in, in jail already. But uh, it's, it is continuing. So I feel like he, he's still going to get prosecuted for that. He's still going to have to pay the piper. Crossing over that card is uh, Five of Pentacles. So I feel like Trump is really going to be going down. This is bad news for Trump. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, indictments are coming down. This is only one indictment. Uh, this is only one investigation, but I feel like there's more and more coming. So whenever you pull this card, you know this is a series of uh, bad things happening, you know. And it's like uh, finally catching up with Trump, which we shouldn't be happy about, but we kind of are. <laughs> He's going to, you know, go through that um, period of darkness that, you know, he should have been going through a long time ago. Overlooking his situation is uh, Nine of Swords. So Nine of Swords, stress, 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 stress. It's starting to get to him. Um, he knows he's going to be indicted any day now. He is scared, and it's you know it's starting to weigh heavily on him for sure. But yeah, 
you know, I always, I always had pulled these cards before that Trump, you know, was brushing everything off. Nothing was really bothering him, wanting to get into him. It's getting to him now, you guys. It really is. And look at this. Foundation of the Situation Judgment card. Judgment. Judgment is coming for Trump. He's not going to get around it. I know we are all thinking that nothing ever happens to him and he always gets away with everything. And now that everybody else has classified documents, so they're just going to say, well, he has them just like everybody else. Why are they singling him out? They're singling him out because of, he said, I didn't have them. He would not hand them over. And Pence, you know, said, hand these over. Go look for them and hand them over. And so has Biden. Biden asked you know, he asked them to come and search his home. So there, there's a big difference here. Okay. Two of Pentacles. That's the last card I pulled on him. This is the very near future for Trump and this um, class, classified documents. Is he going to, um, you know, be in, continue being investigated? What's going to happen? And, you know, there's there's a lot of things going on right now. A whole lot of different things. Um, they're They're... There's a lot of different investigations, and they're juggling a lot. Uh, and I feel like one thing affects the other, affects the other. So that may be why things are happening so slowly, because they don't want to open their hand from one to the other. So maybe when they do one indictment, uh, some others have to come in, in succession. You know what I mean? So that being said, they're trying to balance everything. So everything will come out as it should. Just think of it like that. And... Um, he's gonna. He is going to have to pay the piper. He. I do believe he'll be um, prosecuted for this. I really do. But like I said, there's so much going on with the DOJ. There's so many investigations that involve him. And now that they have, you know, the other classified documents to look at and everything, and they have to compare how those documents became in Biden's possession, in Pence's possession, in Trump's possession. So they have to they have to go look at everything, and they've got to weigh everything. Um, and when they do, then they'll be able to move forward. So that's where what, that's what's going on right now. But they will follow traditional um, laws, and he'll have to pay the piper. That's what I'm getting. But there's a lot going on, so we're just gonna have to wait for that to um, come out. But I believe it will. I believe it will. Okay, guys. I am going to wrap it up for now. It's kind of, it's getting late in the day. I have to go cook dinner. Y'all know I have grandkids here, so I have to cook dinner for grandkids every day. And I had told you guys before that my do my youngest daughter that lives with me, she is in an, an exclusive relationship with a young man, and I'm so happy for her. Um, she's kind of semi-living with him. <laughs> Tell all her business here. <laughs> But, uh, and, and I'm really excited. I'm really happy for her. She's in love, and it's so wonderful to see her happy. But today she came home. Uh, this morning it was raining. Oh, it's raining so hard. And uh, her boyfriend, he works uh, construction, so he was rained out, so he was with her. And they came by and had some breakfast. They brought breakfast. I didn't have to cook it for him, thank goodness. They brought breakfast by, and... Uh, he he can go he went to work somewhere else where he could work inside so there's some other things that they're doing inside so he actually did go to work but he was a little late because of the rain they had to change the plans i guess anyway uh i'm so happy for her that she has someone to share her life with and it's so exciting and she he left he went to work she went and took a nap in her room that you know now she's only using it for naps <laughs> my other daughter, she has two, her two sons are here and her sons are sharing a room and they're like, if she's not going to live here, can we have her room? They want her room. They're like, either are you in or are you out? Are you going or are you coming back or what? But she's half and half. And I can't really say anything to her because she's not married. It's not permanent. But the funny thing is she woke up and she goes, oh, mom, I'm late for work. Could you please wash Jason's clothes for me? <laughs> so I have another child at home. I just inherited another child, so I'm washing clothes for Jason, but that's okay. I'm happy to do it. It's just one load. It ain't going to hurt me none. It's not like I'm scrubbing them myself. I threw them in the washing machine. I'll put them in the dryer. No problem. Anyway, it's kind of funny how things work. So maybe, maybe, you know, and, you know, a few months from now, maybe we'll have a wedding. We'll see. I'll, I am so hopeful for that. So, 
might get rid of these dogs that are here and that'd be really great not that I don't love them I'd love them to death but it's a 120 pound dog in my house it's huge and he follows me everywhere and wants my attention constantly so yeah it's a pain anyway um, I will make another video about my ongoing story there's a lot of things that I can't say because there's you know just like in any family you can't tell all the secrets because it hurt other people so there's lots and lots of things that went on in my life that I would love to share with y'all but I can't so I'm going to share what I can so I'll make another video and letting you know with my the, the third part of my story so like I said I'm going to jump around a little bit probably things will come up but it wasn't all doom and gloom at my house I promise you there were many many happy times uh, in my childhood that um, my mom was great on Christmas and Easter and she loved holidays so she went hog wild on holidays that was the best time we loved Christmas you can make a list and we we would get everything on our list she would let you know you could get I guess it was a JC Penney catalog Sears Sears catalog that's what it was a Sears catalog you know and you'd look all at all the toys and write down everything you wanted and Santa brought everything you wanted and I'd have a big old long list and I can remember getting everything on my list so she was very good about that that's for sure so it wasn't all it wasn't all sad it was good there were good times too but um, yeah we had our ups and downs put it that way we had our difficulties I guess all families do right okay you guys thank you for tuning in with me I appreciate it uh, things will continue to go on and on and on it's just like oh all the shootings the shootings in California God bless them uh, prayers you know the Chinese community um, they were you know celebrating the Chinese New Year and this guy goes and unloads automatic weapon did you see that 26 year old took the gun away from him that's all it takes it takes one brave person to jump up and get, you know I mean I, he could have gotten killed he could have gotten shot so I'm not telling somebody go get yourself killed but look at him he's 26 years old and he saved so many lives God bless him that's miraculous and I just pray for all the people that have been affected hurt and killed and all the families that are missing their loved ones from gun violence God bless you all my heart goes out to all of you it's very very sad very sad we really need to have stricter gun laws y'all nobody should be able to have a semi-automatic or automatic nobody needs a gun that can you know fire multiple times nobody needs that nobody we don't need guns when when my grandbaby was born my first grandbaby was born I told my husband had a gun oh my gosh y'all my husband had a handgun and uh, I told him get rid of that handgun you're not having a handgun here and I said my grandbabies are here you're not having it we're, we're not gonna have it because we were it was my the first grandson actually I think we had our granddaughters he had that gun but it was up in the closet and but when the grandson I don't know something about a grandson and I was like you need to get rid of the guns I'm telling you this little boy when he was born as soon as he could talk and open his mouth gun 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 all he wanted was guns it was so weird because me and my daughter both are so against guns we didn't ever want him to have a toy gun or anything we didn't want to you know instigate this you know start anything any love of guns for him that little boy wanted a gun all the time so she would get him those water guns you know those uh, big soaker water guns oh and nerf guns he would have nerf guns he had all kinds of nerf guns he loved guns so he did have toy guns and I'm glad we got rid of the real gun you know because you never know about kids my husband I think I told the story before my husband used to uh, keep his gun when my children were little we were jewelers and we were going back and forth from to our jewelry store you know and uh, sometimes we would go out of town for jewelry show conventions and we felt like we needed some protection because some people have been robbed when they go to the conventions so we had a gun in uh, the car he kept it in the car in the glove compartment and you know what my daughter told us as a grown woman later on she said you know what mama one day I got in dad's car when y'all weren't at home because we had two cars and his car was in the garage and she said I got in his car opened his glove compartment took his his gun was in a zipper pouch she said I unzipped that pouch I took the gun out and I looked at it 
looked at it, felt it and all, and then I put it back in and zipped it up. I never knew that. See, the gun is not safe no matter where your gun is. It's not safe. Even if you think it's safe, it's not safe. That's why I wanted to get rid of it, especially after she told me that. And she didn't tell me that until she was a grown woman to, for years and years later. I was like, we're never having a gun in this house again, never. And we haven't. My husband does have rifles, um, a shotgun or, um, I don't know, a hunting rifle. I don't know what it is. But he does have a hunting rifle and a case up in his um, closet. So, yeah. If, just in case he gets to go hunting one day, which I hate. I hate for him to go hunting, but he loves hunting. He was raised hunting ram in Iran, and uh, he loves it. He loves to go hunting. I tell him, what's hunting? It's a deer are standing right there looking at you. They're, they're looking at you thinking you're going to feed them and you're going to shoot them. Give me a break. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe in hunting, but anyway, he does. So. All right, so I digress. God bless all the people that were affected with um, all the shootings that happened over the weekend and yesterday. God bless them all. All right, guys, thank you again so much for all your well wishes for baby Lane. Uh, he has not been moved from the Salt Lake City Hospital that he's in. There, uh, insurance issue. They're waiting on insurance. It's all about insurance. And of course, uh, the donations, you know how that works. You have a GoFundMe account. You're not going to get the money for a while. And I think that their goal is 20000 and I think they're like at seventeen or something. So thank you guys so much for donating. It will help them in the future when they get the money. It will help them greatly. Uh, they're looking for a place to move to in Houston. They have all these animals. They have cats. They have dogs. They have horses. Uh, and they're farming them out. They're like calling relatives. Can you take the cat? Can you take the dog? You know, because they're staying at the hospital 24-7. They're... they're trying to find a place to live, but really they're living at the hospital pretty much. And they feel terrible when they're not there. Um, my niece, she feels horrible if she's not there. And then when she's there, she's so tired because she's there all the time. God bless her. It's, uh, it's quite a dilemma. It's very taxing. My sister, her mama, uh, gosh, it was way, gosh, way before Christmas. I think they got there mm, the 10th. December 10th or something like there that I'm not sure the first maybe the first week in December they went into the hospital so she's been there since then they're still at the hospital my sister has not been home you know in almost two months she hasn't seen her home her bed her dog her cat nothing in a couple of months she misses you know her home her husband has come to visit her of course but uh, he, he can't stay because he's got to go take care of the animals, the house, and he's got to work. So somebody's got to keep the show on the road. So they got to, you know, go their separate way. So it's very, very hard. And uh, I pray for them. And I wish my sister could go take a break. Just go home for a couple of days, you know. But she wants to be there for her daughter. She's such a wonderful mother and such a good support system for her daughter. So I'm really proud of the wonderful mother that she is. She's a beautiful mother, wonderful mother. I wish I had a mama like that. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for all your donation and well wishes. I really appreciate it. And hopefully Baby Lane will get moved soon. But like I said, it's just a, it's an insurance issue now. They're just trying to get permission and get all the insurance so that he can be moved. Because they won't accept him unless they have the insurance. You know how that works, right? So, yeah. It's an it's a insurance issue. All right, guys, thank y'all for listening to me. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Love you so much. Thank you for all your beautiful comments. I'm still doing healing sessions. I do them every day. I've done quite a few today. I'm doing readings too, I'm doing um, chakra balancing and energy work. I'm doing them every day. So if you need anything, look down below. There's my email. I'm happy to help you. Okay, guys, love you so much. Y'all take care. Do something kind for somebody. It'll always come back to you. Bye for now.